ladies and gentlemen. Today, I want to entreat you to pause for a moment and reflect on your last post on social media. Was it a snapshot of your breakfast? Or perhaps a rant about the horrendous traffic? Regardless, have you ever wondered what you're inadvertently revealing about yourself online? Just how much is too much, and honestly, why should you even care? Well, in this ultra-connected digital age, privacy is akin to a rare, precious gem, one that we ought to appreciate. I can almost hear the wheels turning in your mind. Privacy? Haven't we heard enough of that? But allow me to assure you, this isn't your typical lecture on privacy. We're delving into a chest of treasures that extends beyond merely setting up a few passwords. In this intriguing discussion today, we are about to journey through the corridors of time to reveal how our forebears understood and valued privacy. We will unravel complex philosophical threads, constructing a tableau that illuminates why privacy isn't just a personal safeguard, but a societal asset. So, buckle up as we catapult ourselves into the 21st century, breathing life into these ancient philosophies with some startling real-life examples. You'll witness how the choices you make can either harness or relinquish your power in this era of information overload. Shall we embark on this nostalgic journey? We are transporting ourselves way back to ancient Greece, to the time of the great thinker, Aristotle. You may recall Aristotle as the bearded philosopher, but did you know that he was among the pioneers to segregate the public from the private domains? Imagine an ancient Greek domicile. It's bifurcated into two domains. The first is the public space, a bustling marketplace, the stage for all political discourse. The second is the private domain, a serene domestic sphere where personal and family matters unfold. Aristotle proclaimed the public domain superior as it was the arena for rational, political life. But can we dismiss our private sphere as trivial? Fast forward a few centuries and we are still grappling with striking the right balance between the private and public realms. The advent of the digital revolution has added a layer of complexity. It feels as if we've been bestowed with a loudspeaker that amplifies our private lives into the public domain. Consider the internet as an energetic marketplace, buzzing with the chatter of billions. Our musings, once whispered into the ears of our trusted allies, are now broadcasted as status updates for the world to see. The demarcation between Aristotle's realms has blurred to such an extent that it's akin to separating milk from coffee after an enthusiastic stir. Now, the concept of privacy has a rather private etymology. It is derived from the Latin privatus, signifying withdrawn from public life. But as we've grown more interconnected, this withdrawal has morphed into a strategic retreat. And trust me, this isn't a game of chess where you can simply castle your king to safety. In this digital battlefield, oversharing is akin to exposing your king to an imminent checkmate. Pause for a moment and consider this. Isn't openness applauded? We often hear about transparency and sharing our lives with others. While sharing indeed fosters closer relationships, oversharing leaves us vulnerable, akin to a house with its doors and windows wide open, inviting but susceptible to unwelcome intruders. This might sound a tad controversial, but I propose that oversharing is the new tobacco. It provides immediate gratification, but the long-term implications can be detrimental. Privacy, therefore, serves as our health warning, our filter against the smog of surplus information. As we navigate through this sea of information, let's ensure we control our course. Privacy is our compass, directing us through the haze of the digital era. As we plot our trajectory, let's remember that treasure isn't always in the form of silver or gold. Sometimes, it's the power to declare, This is mine, and mine alone. As we prepare to delve deeper into the philosophy of privacy, let's question how much are we ready to share, and what price are we willing to pay. Venturing into the realm of philosophy is akin to meandering through a labyrinth, full of twists and turns, with each corner presenting a unique viewpoint. Consider Ruth Gavison, a philosopher who presents a complex idea. Privacy is a spectrum of concepts bundled under the umbrella of accessibility. Picture a castle, if you will. The walls, the moat, the drawbridge, 
they all govern access to the castle, correct? Similarly, our privacy regulates the access others have to our lives. Consider Anita Allen, another philosopher, who paints a broader canvas of privacy, highlighting its various forms, seclusion, solitude, secrecy, confidentiality, and anonymity. Imagine yourself at a masquerade ball, veiled behind a mask of your choice. That's anonymity for you. Now, consider a deserted island, far from society's prying eyes, that's seclusion. Each form of privacy, a unique mask, a unique island, shapes our experiences in distinctive ways. As we proceed, keep the name Adam Moore in mind. According to him, privacy is the right to control access to our bodies, spaces, and information. It's akin to holding the master key to your life and deciding who can borrow it and when. Privacy can be viewed as a shield. Consider your life as a precious gem. Wouldn't you want to guard it from the prying eyes of jewel thieves? Privacy serves this purpose, safeguarding us from scrutiny, judgment, and exploitation. It's like a snug blanket on a frosty day, buffering us from the harsh winds of the world. Let's pivot and consider privacy from a societal perspective. Is privacy an isolated star in the night sky or a part of a constellation that holds collective meaning? Philosophers like Priscilla Reagan and Daniel Solov posit that privacy isn't merely a lone star. It forms part of a constellation that holds societal value. A society devoid of privacy is like a book devoid of words, meaningless. However, a society with an excess of privacy is akin to a book written in cryptic language, isolating and cold. Isn't it a delicate balancing act? Lastly, let's explore the power of privacy. In the digital age, information is the new gold, and controlling access to it translates into power. Imagine being able to control a river's flow, deciding who gets water and who doesn't. That's the power of controlling personal information in today's world. As we step away from philosophy for now, we are about to journey through real-life examples, exploring how these abstract concepts manifest in our daily lives. Let's enter the digital realm for a moment. Picture an eager individual, let's call him Bob. He's posting, tweeting, and sharing his life like a kid in a candy store, his life splayed across the internet like a digital tapestry, basking in the attention. But one day, Bob wakes up to an identity theft nightmare. His life, once an open book across the digital landscape, has become a feast for cybercriminals. It's a shocking reminder of how we need to treat our digital wallets with the same caution as our physical ones. Now meet Alice, the antithesis of Bob. She navigates the internet like a masquerade ball, conscientiously choosing what to reveal and what to keep hidden. Alice's online experience, then, is not about dousing fires but about enrichment and enjoyment. Her story is a testament to the quiet power of careful sharing. In this age of digital liberation, it's easy to perceive privacy as a modern-day shackle. But what if we are overlooking the bigger picture? What if privacy is not a restraint but a tool, a veritable Excalibur that we can wield to carve our space in the digital universe? Let's ponder this who holds the power, the individual who bears it all or the one who decides what to reveal and when. In an era where information is as valuable as gold, doesn't the one who controls their information hold the power? Consider your life as a beautiful canvas. Would you allow anyone and everyone the right to splatter paint on it? Or would you prefer to be the artist, the one who determines what goes on the canvas? That's what privacy grants us the power to paint our own lives, both in the physical and digital realm. In closing, I'll leave you with a thought from Edward Snowden. Arguing that you don't care about the right to privacy because you have nothing to hide is no different than saying you don't care about free speech because you have nothing to say. Until we meet again, treasure your privacy, guard it like a dragon guards its hoard. Because in the digital realm, it truly is a treasure. Take care, and see you soon.